The Rapid Cognitive Screen was developed out of the St. Louis University Mental Status Exam, exam colloquially known as the slums. It, when we did the slums, we found that it would pick up mild cognitive impairment as well, if not better, than any of the other screens. Our plan was to say, could we go to something that is quicker to do, but would also pick up mild cognitive impairment. The rapid cognitive screen has been extremely useful to me, as even as a geriatrician, where I tend to use some of the longer screens more frequently. If I'm in a hurry and I have somebody that may be what I call the, the doorknob complaint where I was about to walk out the door and then they say, oh, by the way, doctor, I've also noticed some of these other issues, I can use this very rapid screen. It takes just literally a few minutes and I ask those questions and I get a lot of information from that in a short amount of time. There are three parts to the rapid cognitive screen. The first is five words uh, that you need to memorize. The second part is the drawing of a clock and putting in the time at 10 to 11. And the third part is a paragraph where there is one question on the paragraph and that requires the person to take the name of the town and place it in a state or to take the name of the town and place it in a country, the international version. So in the first item, um, you are testing delay recall, so you want them to really mm, learn those five words. I ask them for a second time to practice with me the five words. And you can do that no more than three times, but it's important that you ensure that they learn and understand what you are saying, those five words. So in that way, the delay recall uh, is valid. Let's say this is a clock face. I would like you to put the clock numbers on it. I would like you to put the time with the hour marker saying 10 minutes to 11 o'clock. The hour, well, I did that wrong. So you can erase yes. Excellent, thank you. The scoring of the clock as has been validated is not to look at how they do it, but to look at the final process. Basically, the important piece is that the hour markers need to fit within the full clock. Many people will get most of the hour markers in and they will have got to what most of us would think is about six o'clock or something like that. And then they may put the last two in in the right places that would basically be inappropriate and they would get no marks for that. Uh, varieties of different things, including clock reversal, can occur. All of those lose you your marks for the clock part. When you come to the time, we've used 10 to 11. Uh, the important piece is the person is told the time before they start drawing the clock and you cannot cue them. Many people come back and say, please, what was that time again? You can't cue them at that stage because this is a memory piece as well as visual spatial. All right, what were those five words I told you to memorize? Uh, apple, uh, tie, house, car, I forgot one of them. Uh, I don't remember what that was. The five words are used because fundamentally we found that many people who are in early mild cognitive impairment actually can remember three words without any trouble, but when you ask them to remember five words, they finish up being able to remember only one or two of them. I'm going to tell you a story. Listen to it carefully because I'm going to ask you some questions afterwards, okay? Jill was a very successful stockbroker. 
She made a lot of money on the stock market. She then met Jack, a devastatingly handsome man. She married him and had three children. They lived in Chicago. She then stopped work and stayed at home to bring up her children. When they were teenagers, she went back to work. She and Jack lived happily ever after. What state did she live in? Uh, Illinois. The last item is the story. Um, so it's a short story and it has, you're only asking one question, which is what stage she lived in. And that question tests for two things, immediate recall and um, executive function as well, because you are asking them to interpret the information you gave them. You ask them what state did she live in. The state is not mentioned in the story. You are mentioning the city. So that's why it's testing executive function. Well, Mr. Green, seems to me you had a, a almost perfect score. So no, um, this, this test um, is really a screening test, which just suggests, um, tells us how your memory is doing. And as of, uh, as of um, based on these results, it shows that um, your memory is just fine. Oh, that's good news. All I'm right. Glad to hear that, doctor. <laughs>